Welcome to Recyclist. It's April 28th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. Starting with some big news out of Florida, Korean company Low Carbon plans to break ground on a $100 million clean hydrogen facility in Polk County to support the state's rapidly growing space program. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis met with company executives Space Florida and Ocean Green this past week, signing in a memorandum of understanding with the company for the creation of what will be called a research hub for clean hydrogen technology in Florida. The number of aviation and aerospace businesses in Polk County alone has increased from 24 in 2010 to 42 in 2020. This clean hydrogen facility is a major step towards supporting that industry. Governor DeSantis said, quote, Our state is taking a bold step toward promoting long-term development in the aerospace and space industry across the entire supply chain. From manufacturing and launching to fuel production, Florida is the global leader in the new space economy. End quote. Construction is expected to begin on the facility June 2023. Car manufacturer BMW recently celebrated 20 years of a successful partnership with South Carolina's Palmetto Landfill by extending the partnership for an additional eight years. For two decades, their plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina, has been using recycled methane gas from a local landfill to provide electricity and hot water. Per BMW, more than 9,200 tons of CO2 emissions have been reduced each year, which is equivalent to eliminating CO2 emissions from vehicles driving 23.5 million miles every year. This supplies about 20% of the plant's total energy. And speaking of celebrations, supermarket chain King Supers recently revealed the numbers of their Zero Hunger, Zero Waste initiative for 2022, stating that the company has kept 19.8 million pounds of produce from the landfill across all 125 participating stores last year. The way the program works for King Super is employees perform what are called fresh walks throughout the store and pull any products that have already been marked down. What can't be donated, interestingly, is sent off to a third-party company who composts the material, bags it, and then returns it to the supermarket chain to be sold in stores as such. Corporate affairs manager Jessica Trowbridge said, Quote, it's a full life cycle. We've been doing this program for a long time. We've been committed to our zero hunger, zero waste program and just making sure that we're being a responsible retailer and a good steward for the environment. As you can imagine, across our stores, we work with a lot of organic materials. So in produce, our meat department, bakeries, floral departments, there are a lot of items that could possibly have ended up in landfills. End quote. Shifting gears to recycling now, University of Kansas researchers and collaborators are currently developing new technologies for recycling solar panels. Solar panels are constructed from several layers of materials, including glass, adhesives, metals, and semiconductors. Recovering these rare and costly metals from end-of-life panels is typically expensive, slow, destructive, and requires harsh chemical conditions. Because of this, according to the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory, less than 10% of the country's decommissioned panels are actually recycled. University of Kansas scientists are poised to avert this looming waste crisis with help from a $1.3 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy's Solar Energy Technologies Office. In collaboration with the Idaho National Laboratory and First Solar Incorporated, researchers at KU's Center for Environmentally Beneficial Catalysis are developing a low-cost method to separate and reuse components from used solar panels for recycling. A spokesman for the program said, quote, Our goal is to demonstrate a recycling technology that can be easily scaled up and is also green. 
efficient recycling of solar panels will be essential as the industry grows to ensure the availability of critical materials, minimize waste, and limit costs. Solving this problem now is essential to avoid the type and scale of pollution that we currently face with waste plastics. This project is an example of the forward-thinking research that KU and its collaborators undertake to promote the sustainability of our planet. End quote. Up in New York, the state is poised for a complete revamp of its recycling program following the launch of a recycling system needs assessment project. The Center for Sustainable Materials Management, housed at the Sunny College of Environmental Science and Forestry, began a partnership with Resource Recycling Systems to launch the process of conducting a statewide assessment and gap analysis for New York's recycling system. The vision is to make New York State a driving force of the future by galvanizing and leading all sectors of the state to apply the principles of sustainable materials management, propelling the state to become the least resource consumptive and most circular in the country. The assessment will compile data on how the recycling system in the state operates, including the amount and types of material collected, hauling and sorting infrastructure, and required operational and capital investment needs. This analysis is seen as a critical first step to New York State meeting its recycling rate goals for the total waste stream of 85% by 2050. And lastly, Adams County, Pennsylvania will finally be getting its first ever glass recycling program. The county will soon have a drop-off site to collect glass for recycling. In honor of last week's Earth Day, the Adams County Community Foundation announced multiple grants through the Adams County Fund for the Environment, including a $10,000 grant for Adams County officials to construct a glass recycling facility. The money will go toward building a concrete pad and containment area near the Department of Energy Services. The construction work is anticipated to be, quote, minimal. The county hopes to have the site up and running by mid-summer. County officials say the site will have scheduled drop-offs for glass, which will be received by volunteer groups. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for April 28th. 2023 presented by diamond scientific an industry leader in gas analysis instrumentation and solutions make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com that's diamond sci.com or call them at area code 321-223-7500 i've been your host eric provost we'll see you back here next week for another recyclist update